Anytime you check the headlines of your favorite technology site, you see stories about high-profile hacks, data theft, and malware havoc. Almost every day brings news of another attack. Now, to IT professionals like us, threats are nothing new. I've been fighting bad guys since Pentium Pro processors were the new hotness. But it's a different playing field now. Compared to those good old days, attacks today are more frequent, more sophisticated, and come from more directions. A fact that can scare many CIOs away from cloud opportunities. In fact, if you haven't already had the following conversation, you will. It goes something like this. Did you hear about the data breach at so-and-so's multi-tenant cloud environment? Yes, but there are ways to secure cloud environments from the hardware all the way up through the virtualization stack. Do you know how much a breach would cost us? I think we need to put that cloud pilot project on hold. Now you have a choice to make. Do you give up and say goodbye to the efficiency and savings you can gain through cloud computing? No! You say, our cloud infrastructure is solid. Intel, VMware, and HITRUST have us covered. And it's true, they do have you covered, because you can establish a trusted execution environment that protects platform components during boot and launch, including BIOS, firmware, and virtual machine managers. In this demo, I'll show you how to create that trusted execution environment for your cloud infrastructure using Intel Xeon processors, VMware vSphere, VMware vCenter server, and HITRUST appliance. By the time we're finished, you'll know how to balance security, control, and compliance with cloud efficiency, performance, and agility. Your panicky CIO is right about one thing. With cloud computing, you need a secure infrastructure you can trust from the ground up. In this demo, I'll show you how to set up a secure platform that starts with Intel Trusted Execution Technology or Intel TXT. Intel TXT is a set of security enhancements built into select Intel Xeon processors and chipsets. It validates the behavior and configurations of server components against a known good sequence at startup, helping prevent attacks that fly in under the OS, such as BIOS and firmware update attacks, reset attacks, and rootkit hypervisors. There's too much to cover in this demo, but here are a few key capabilities of Intel TXT. Intel TXT provides protected execution and memory spaces where sensitive data can be processed. It uses sealed storage to shield encryption keys and other secrets. Through verified launch, Intel TXT enables launch of the measured launch environment into a known good state with changes detected through cryptographic measurements. It enables attestation, which confirms that a system has correctly invoked the trusted execution environment and enables verified measurement of software running in it. For more details, go to the URL shown here. An Intel and VMware cloud solution is made up of server, storage, networking hardware, and the software that ties it all together into cloud-based goodness. But once it's running, you don't just lock up your server rack to ward off security threats. Cloud solutions require tough measures to keep the bad guys out. That's where High Trust and Intel TXT come in. By the way, if you want to read more about the reference architecture that we're configuring, go to intel.com forward slash cloud builders. For this reference architecture, you'll need Intel Xeon processor-based servers with TXT. VMware vSphere 4.1 Update 1 or higher, High Trust Appliance 2.2 or higher, a Microsoft Windows Server-based infrastructure, including Active Directory and DNS services. To realize the benefits of TXT, we first have to enable it in the server's BIOS. Hardware vendors have different ways of accessing the BIOS settings, but generally here's what you need to do. Enable Intel TXT. Enable Intel Virtualization Technology, or Intel VT. Enable Intel VT for directed I.O. Set a BIOS administrator password. Activate the Trusted Platform module. After you do that, you're ready to install and configure your VMware vSphere cluster. Note that your cluster network should contain two VLANs. The first VLAN carries virtual machine traffic and is attached to your corporate network. The second VLAN carries your cluster management traffic 
and is protected by the high trust appliance. And there you have it, almost as easy as riding a tricycle. Now we need to establish trusted boot on each of our hosts. Launch the VMware vSphere client and connect to the VMware vCenter server. Select the first host in your cluster and then click the Configuration tab. Click Advanced Settings and then click Miscellaneous. Type a 1 in the field next to the misc.enableTboot option and then click OK. Repeat this process for each host in your cluster. We also need to create some accounts and security groups in Active Directory. Create two security groups, one for high trust super admins, the other for standard high trust admins. For this demo, our groups are named HT underscore super admin group and SSLA underscore administrators. Create two user accounts who are members of each security group, a high trust super admin account and the other a standard high trust admin account. For this demo, our accounts are named HT admin 1 and HT admin 2. Create another standard user account that can be used as a service account for high trust. For this demo, our account is named HT Service. Now we're ready to install and configure the High Trust appliance. This software is delivered as an OVF template, which you can download from High Trust's website from this URL. Instructions for importing and initially configuring the High Trust appliance can be found in the High Trust appliance installation and configuration section of the reference architecture. Now we'll map High Trust roles to the Active Directory security groups we created. Log in to the High Trust appliance using a web browser. In the High Trust appliance dashboard, click Configuration and then click Authentication. Click the Directory Service button and then click Apply. Enter your domain's root name in the Root Domain Name field. Enter the name and password of the service account you created in Active Directory in the Service Account fields, and then click Next. For the HT underscore Super Admin role, select the Active Directory domain name from the Domain Name drop-down list. In the Group Name field, enter HT underscore Super Admin Group, which is the Super Admin Group we created in Active Directory. Next, verify all of the Active Directory settings, and then click Finish. Once you click Finish, the High Trust appliance will convert to Active Directory mode and will log you out. You will need to log back in using the username htadmin1, which is the Active Directory Super Admin account we created in Active Directory. Next, we'll add VMware vCenter and VMware vSphere hosts to the High Trust appliance. On the High Trust appliance dashboard, click Compliance and then click Hosts. Click Add. Enter the host name or IP address of the VMware vCenter server, and then the vCenter username and password. Click Next. Enter a descriptive name for the VMware vCenter server, and then click Next. In a high trust environment, the high trust appliance acts as an intermediary between the VMware vSphere client and VMware vCenter server. The VMware vCenter server is accessed through an IP address that maps to the high trust appliance. The high trust appliance then moderates all traffic between the vSphere client and vCenter server. Enter an unused IP address and published IP mask and then click Next. You may want to write this IP address down, as we'll use it later in the demo. Click Finish. Once vCenter is added to the High Trust appliance, click your browser's refresh button. All of the vSphere hosts managed by the VMware vCenter instance appear, but are in an untrusted state. To configure the hosts, click the checkbox next to each host and then click Add. For this demo, we'll leave one of the hosts untrusted so that later we can see what happens when we try to vMotion a VM to an untrusted host. On the General tab, enter the root user ID and password for the hosts. Next, click the Published IP tab. 
In the same way that the high trust appliance acts as an intermediary to the VMware vCenter server, it also acts as an intermediary to the vSphere hosts. Enter an unused range of IP addresses and a net mask accessible from your management network. Click OK to return to the hosts page. A shield next to the VMware vCenter server and each host indicates that they are now protected by high trust. Since we want to have all management network traffic moderated by the high trust appliance, we need to make sure that any network traffic destined for the VMware vCenter server or VMware vSphere hosts native IP addresses is redirected to the published high trust IP addresses. While this level of network configuration is beyond the scope of this demo, details for doing so can be found in the high trust documentation. Next, we'll need to obtain and enter the TPM Digest value for the specific version of VMware vSphere running on the hosts. This value uniquely identifies the version of VMware vSphere running on a trusted host and is generated by the server's TPM hardware. If the confirmed trusted value stored in high trust does not match the value provided by a host, the host is removed from the trusted pool. On the host page, Click the checkbox next to any of the TXT enabled hosts and then click Update Trust. Once High Trust updates the trust status, click General and then click Log Viewer. In the search box, enter Intel TXT Digest Found slash Expected and then click Go. The TXT Digest value is a 40 character string located in the Message column. Highlight the value and copy it to the clipboard. Next, click Configuration and then click Trusted Execution. Click on the VMware vSphere version your servers are running. In the Digest field, paste the TPM Digest value and then click OK. Now click Compliance and then click Hosts. Click the checkbox next to each of the trusted hosts and then click Update Trust. High Trust establishes a trust relationship and displays a lock next to each trusted host. We've added our hosts to the high trust appliance and established trust relationships. Now we'll create policies that enforce security during vMotion and when deploying new VMs. Notice that each host has a security template assigned to it. We want to apply this template to harden each host. Click the checkbox next to each trusted host and then click Remediate. This action applies the security template to the host. Next, we'll define a rule set that allows vMotion only between trusted hosts and VM power up only on trusted hosts. Click Policy and then click Rule Sets. Click Create Draft and then click Add. Enter a name for this policy and then click OK. For this demo, we'll name it Demo Policy. Now we'll define the policy rules. Click Policy and then click Rules. Click Add. Enter a name for this rule in the Name field. For this demo, we'll name it Demo Rule 1. Select the Active Directory domain from the Domain drop-down list and then enter SSLA underscore Administrators, which is the security group for standard administrators we created in Active Directory. Select HT underscore VI Admin from the drop-down list and then click the Propagate checkbox. Click OK. Now click Add. Select VM Move or Clone from the Constraint Type drop-down list and then click Trusted in both the Move To Labels and Move From Labels lists. Click OK. Next we'll assign the policy to the rule set we created. Click Assign. Click the Rule Sets button. Click the checkbox next to Demo Policy and then click OK. Now that we have our policy and rule set defined, we can assign the rule set to one or more virtual machines. Click Policy and then click Rule Sets. Click the checkbox next to Demo Policy and then click Assign. 
Click the Virtual Machine checkbox and then select the virtual machines you want to restrict. Click OK. Now we need to give basic login privileges to our Active Directory security group. Click Policy and then click Rules. Click Add. Enter a name for this rule. For this demo, we'll name this rule Basic Login. Select the Active Directory domain from the Domain drop-down list, and then enter the security group name in the User Group field. Select HT underscore Basic Login from the Role drop-down list, and then click the Propagate checkbox. Click OK. Click Assign, and then click Rule Sets. Click the checkbox next to Demo Policy, and then click OK. Click OK again. We can extend our policy to allow virtual machines to power up only on trusted hosts. To do this, we'll create a new rule and add it to our rule set. Click Demo Rule 1. In the Constraints section, click Add. Select Host Label Match from the Constraint Type list. Click Trusted in the Label list and then click OK. Click OK again. Click Deploy to activate the rule set. Our VMware vSphere servers and virtual machines are now protected, and we're ready to see Intel TXT and High Trust in action. Start the VMware vSphere client and log into VMware vCenter server using its High Trust Protected IP address, the one you wrote down in the previous section. Log in using the Active Directory account htadmin1. Right-click on one of the protected virtual machines and then click Migrate. Click the Change Host button and then click Next. Expand the cluster tree and select an untrusted host. Click Next. Select the High Priority button and then click Next. Click Finish. High Trust applies the security policy we created and does not allow the virtual machine to be migrated to an untrusted host, resulting in VMware vSphere client displaying a permission denied by High Trust Appliance error message. We can also see a warning in the High Trust Log Viewer. It takes some time and effort to set up a trusted computing platform, but when compared to the time and effort a serious breach could cost, well, there's really no comparison. You don't have to give up cloud flexibility and efficiency because of your CIO's security concerns, so go ahead and get started. You know what you need. VMware vSphere, High Trust Appliance, and Intel Xeon processor-based host servers with Intel TXT. Refer to this video as often as you need to, and download the reference architecture at intel.com forward slash cloud builders.